Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. Today we are going to learn, uh, we learned about over-aggression with Sona the other day. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to learn how to be equally aggressive to back up our support, who is actually built to be more aggressive. We, we got a Leona in our lane and we couldn't, we were, were playing a conservative playstyle that we're comfortable with on Twitch. Like we had a Janna or a Soraka, something sustained, not very fight heavy. And I'm usually fine with that switch because I just want to scale on up, scale on up, get my items, get those two core items of the IE and the Runons, and then start like really just unloading. But if we have a Leona as our support, we have to match that aggression. We have to. We're playing the lane wrong if we don't match the Leona aggression during the lane. I don't care what ADC we are. We could be Jace. <laughs> yeah, especially with Jace, actually. <laughs> so, look, we, we got to learn how to do that. And while we had ourselves a really good day today, as you can tell by the full screen of victories here, right? Um, and I, some nice score lines, if I do say so myself. Um, we had some good games on Twitch in particular. This was our struggle game, right? I mean, at the end of the game, we had a decent score line, but... Um, I think we played this really poorly overall, and you can tell by how few CS we got, right? This is because we got crushed super hard in the lane. We were about 100 CS down for what was a potential CS score that was reasonable during that game. Um, so I want to go ahead and download this game, uh, this one, and we're going to launch into the review today, and we actually should have our drawing tool finally fixed. Thank goodness. Let me make sure you guys can see it all right. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and launch into the game. Uh, I think I just clicked on the side here. There we go. Now we're launching up on up. And let's see what we could have done better, right? I mean, obviously we know the lesson right off the bat of matching our support's aggression. That's going to be today's theme. But how exactly do we do that? What does that mean? What does that look like? Where are the errors we made? And since we're playing a lot of Twitch, we got to be able to have flexible play styles on Twitch. If we're going to play a lot of a champion, we need to know how to adapt them to different circumstances, and particularly in the laning phase. It's very nice that we've learned how to play very defensively, how we've learned to like set up for ganks, how we've learned our combo a bit better. Now we need to take it to the next level. Now we got to get in their face with it. And I'm telling you guys, this is not going to be a pretty start for us. <laughs> But uh, we got we got to review what we did wrong here, so we don't make the same mistakes in the future. It's absolutely critical. Hold on. Uh oh, hold on. I'm having a little trouble here. Give me one sec. Okay, whatever. I think this will work. Perfect. Perfect. Now let's put this back on top. Great. Okay, so, if I can click into the client here. Oh, golly gee willikers. Luckily, there wasn't anything going on in this start. I can hit that. Mm -hmm. It's receiving some of my stuff, but not the rest. Oh, golly gee willikers. Sorry, guys. We might have to restart this one. There we go. All right, we got it working. No restart needed this game. So I actually ran up to uh, top here because seeing the ward come down, I decided to drop a ward from my trinket over here to spot out Singe. Teammates just pinging, pinging that they know better than me because everybody knows better than everybody else. Um, <laughs> but uh, I did that because if Singe... Since we didn't see him going proxy because we spotted him out here, if we if he gets after this first uh, wave and wants to proxy here, maybe not suicide deep, but just proxy here, he'll, we'll see him go through that tri brush area or at least sweep through here. And we might not have vision if he went like a path like that. So I wanted to drop my trinket to help out uh, top because I'm all the way on the bot side of the map and I'm not going to be able to really affect it. Uh, affect the singe to this game, even though I'm kind of understand how to play against it a little bit, because I've uh, tinkered with it myself. Now, Leona 
wants to level two all in. But I can't really push the wave. And she's actually telling me to like push the wave in chat right now so we can level two all in. But I just can't like I get way out range by Kate. Sona chunks me fairly well early on. And I went forward and I took about half my HP of like health <laughs> and poke. And we just can't do that unless if she's like playing aggressive at the start. In this lane, we get outranged and outpoked. So we just gotta kinda let them have a level two and see the opportunity. But we can still two v level two v level two. And that's alright. So we just gotta kinda chill. Again, we're taking a lot of poke while we're still level one. And she does miss the engage there, but that's fine. And again, this is the this is the cost for that play. Playing a little just like doing stupid shit because like, oh, we wanted to get that juicy level two all in. That's incorrect. If I know that I'm short range and I know that I'm out range and I know that I'm out poked, play back, wait, wait for our opportunity. There's our opportunity. A little slow to react, but we actually do still make it work. I flash for the expunge, the ignite finishes it off, but then I actually um, am here, more concerned about Leona's HP for the heal. Didn't realize I was tanking this big of a call for help. And I'm just gonna die to a Sona auto attack here. And then that's unfortunate. So I did have someone to heal, heal available there. I obviously should have just popped it right from the very start. And it was greedy of me to hang on to it. I should have just used it. Should have just dropped it. Kate had already dropped hers. So we're matching her by doing that. Sure, now we've preserved summoner heal, but I gave up a kill, and that's just wrong. <laughs> Trying to look for a way in there. Can't quite find it. Again, as soon as they start to step forward, this is right. Just back up. Let them overextend, and then Leo will punish the hell out of them in our minion wave, so we get that kind of call for help. Leona using the Zinc Blade to try and uh, get the can in there, but unfortunately she couldn't make it work. Just trying to get a little poke damage. Can't quite get too much. I do soften up the wave, so it's not going to get too shoved in here. We're all sitting fairly decently at this point. Um, yeah, we're about 10 CS behind, but considering we uh, were dead <laughs> already, uh, we missed a considerable amount then, so we're actually, during the lane itself, matching fairly decently. And this is unfortunate. Like, right as I was backing off, Leona went in, right? And I think that's because, like, Caitlyn was stepping forward, but that's exactly what Leona's trigger is, to go. So right here... She's auto-attacking me, she has good trap control, so I'm just backing away. I'm backing away again because they're both forward, but again, that's Leona's trigger. So, a little bit of a misplay there. And then I do get trapped right away, which is just very unfortunate for us. I can't do too much, I gotta be very careful about how I go in here. And I do pop the heal there. Try and get what damage down I can, but it's already just too late. We've already played that too poorly by waiting to go in. And we do wind up getting 2 for 1 on that. But I'm really decelerated this game because I'm missing all the minions. Like, I'm not getting any of the gold for the kills. I'm only at a pickaxe right now, and Kate is going to get herself a zeal and a dagger. So she's already well on her way to her first item rush. And we are quite lagging behind. Sure, we have an expensive first item, but no excuse for the poor play here. Looking to get some assistance here. Can't really find the best opportunity, so just back out, look to help on the Drake. Drop the control ward so we at least get good vision of it. And I think I actually path the greedy way here. No, I do go around back. Okay, great. I'm looking to open up on the Sona here as she tries to clear the control ward. I do get some good poke damage on her. And as she comes back, Leona's coming. And that's probably, again, a misplay on my part. Not this part, but... 
right here. As Leona's coming in to get her on the second wave, I should already be just pathing right back, even if she has vision of me. I can't really like find a good opportunity to go into either of them, so I'm just gonna generally back out. Good thing on J4 coming in and getting them trapped in the ult. Between that and the Zenith play, we are able to uh, pick up Sona. But then this, we are way too low to be at turret, and like we just give up two kills there. This is absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, and I mean that really stemmed out of back it up to see how that worked. That stemmed out of me not being able to find a good target to go on right off the bat here. We just back up even further. Right here. And I back off here, I think that's fine. And I start to go in with J4, it's also good. Wasted a little time auto attacking the control ward there. Didn't have heal available, so couldn't save J4 there. And I already procced the uh, Leona passive off her ability. So I should have just backed away there. Going in for the Kate as well was too greedy. Should have just backed it off. Definitely a team effort to misplay that part, but nonetheless, like I, I could have played that better. And we could have gone back and been farming this whole time, which would have got us a uh, BF sword on this back instead of the crit cloak, which like does effectively nothing for us in lane because it's our first uh, bit of crit chance. And we don't have that much AD behind it, so critting doesn't mean nearly as much. And they can just all in on us at this point. They're so far ahead. 4-2 and 1-2 versus 1-3 and 2-1. Like, they're so far ahead they can all in, even though we have an all-in support. So already kind of playing that. Those minor mistakes have really cost us. And then I just kind of really path here. So I, I think I made some silly mistakes early on. And like that was like the result of tilt. <laughs> a little bit. Um, because I know better than to do that. I'm good on them to pick up Kate on the way out. But I think that we could have been... Like it's safe to play aggressive when Leona is in range to unload. But like... I can't seem to, in this replay, find the line between like playing aggressive according to Leona's capabilities and just like making kind of stupid over aggressive decisions. And this auto attack here was also over aggressive, right? I should have just focused down the turret, but because I'd start with that, now the poison's on him, so I have to attack him because I'm drawing aggro no matter what. And like I'm basically dead right at the start. Because I couldn't do anything. Because I, once I auto-attacked him, we had to attack him. And then I have to come in with no health and like basically just drop heal and expunge and leave. Because I have no health anymore. That's again me playing like, not like the kind of aggressive we want. That's like just poor. Just fighting for the sake of fighting. You know? And then uh, the aggressive pathing over here where they caught me out. I was picking a fight for no reason. Um, trying to shove in that first level one situation. Trying to shove that wave, walking into the range like that. It's picking a fight for no goddamn reason. And we picked a lot of fights for no reason. And it's one thing, again, if the reason is Leon is there to back us up. Okay, great. That's a good enough reason. But if we're just picking a fight to pick a fight, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> Describe that as not good. And then I actually have a ward up here. So I have a position to try and actually steal this. Because I think I'm so far behind and he's not going to smite since he thinks we aren't here to stop him. And I get close, 79, but again, this is like, if I had had a BF sword here, like maybe I could have done this a little bit better. But then he's able to just kill me. And again, that's picking a fight. You know, since we're so far behind, maybe it's fine to try and be the hero there and steal a Drake at the cost of our lives. But look at what we gave up after that, right? We gave up positioning on a turret, which gave them a much better fight than us. So it was only a one for one, and they chipped out our turret. And then after this wave, 
Like, we're finally back into this. But, like, we have totally lost initiative. And even with a great engage like that from J4, we can't make it work. And that all rippled from us being dead at Drake. So I think our life was worth that silly of a Drake attempt. But we're just, again, we're just fighting to fight. We're fighting over Drake. We're not really, like, getting Drake is an objective, but, like, we're not, we don't have a clear plan of what to do. And, like, here again, okay, we picked kind of a fight by pathing like that, but we pathed back towards Leona, who was coming up from here. So by pathing this way, it funnels them like this, and Leona gets a really good engage like this. So this is perfect. This is a perfect example of the way to pick a fight. For a reason. The reason is we us here and we can win. And we do. Even with me as far behind as I am, we win that fight. Then I'm able to hang around, drop some vision to know if this is safe, and just farm out a little bit more. Then I actually can come help this out, stay in the way back, and then just look the back. And because we played that better, look, all of a sudden now we have our IE. Like, now we've got a little bit of extra mobility from the boots. We're starting to come back into our own, and it's because we're starting to pick fights for reasons. We're not just fighting to fight anymore. And I think I got in the mentality with Leona of, let's fight to fight. And that's just wrong, you know? We have to fight because we can win those fights because Leona's next to us. That is the reason. It's not just fight for the sake of fight. Look, again, beautiful engage by Leona. I think I actually ulted there, yeah, I ulted there to try and uh, finish off the damage, but uh, I actually didn't even wind up with an assist for that. But it doesn't matter because, sure, I burn ult, but it guarantees that we get that, and then we get the turret, and the red buff on the way out, which is just great. I'm going to sweep up a little bit of CS on the way out here. Sure he's coming for me, but I throw down my uh, poison, which actually slows as well. Clean up that control ward. Look to catch the next wave. Since Leona is around, thinking, okay, can we come into plain vision and try and bait a fight? Okay, Leona and J4 are here. Okay, let's fight. I kind of split my focus there. I was thinking uh, Kate was probably already dead. I was incorrect if I left that. And took a little bit more damage to actually finish them out. And then my ult comes off cooldown, so I'm able to put some good damage at the end. That's fine. You know, I wound up being a 2 for 4 in that extended engage. That's really good for us overall. Um, and again, I was fighting because my team was there and, and we had number advantage. Like, that's why I was fighting. It wasn't because, let's fight! It was because we had number advantage there. And sure, we didn't have ult, but if we have number advantage, that compensates. And our ult was so low off cooldown, or low on its cooldown, that we were able to actually ult before the very end of that fight. So we're trying to pick up some of the side farm, just to get ourselves farmed back up, back into the game. Because again, we're pretty far behind. If you look at mid, like, I guess so is Kate, and so is Corky. But, like, these two are showing us what kind of farm potential was actually in the game. So we're trying to catch back up to what that is. I'm sure maybe we aren't technically behind our lane opponent, but it still feels like we're pretty far behind. Getting that extra movement speed, looking to go in if possible. And fortunately she can't land the Zenith Blade there, but we're in a good position to rotate on the turret. And we do have the Herald in. I was actually a little slow to come here. So let's look at that again. Since the Herald was summoned, Alright, so that's unfortunate, and that was my key to back off. Since the Herald's still here, they might try and go a little bit more aggressive. So I should be playing with an eye towards that. And I guess we kind of were, and that was just too deep. Tried to do what I could on the way out, but... I, I feel like I was cheating a little bit more towards the Baron side than I really needed to. And I'm low, so I'm playing a little scared here, but also on the way out, like, as soon as they just started hiding that bush, like, this was free time I could have been opening up on Corky with my ult, right? I'm probably hitting stone as well. It's only now that I start, and I actually have to flash in and just sort of stand here. 
Because they're walking away, it's like, well, I gotta finish off Sona, so I'm actually not even gonna move. Then I walk right on a trap, it sucks. Let's try and cut off Kate. And we're gonna get to Um, we actually played this pretty well. Managed to dodge the aggro around on him. So we were able to get the kill for free there. Which is great. Again, we're starting to come back into our own. That start was pretty bad, and I think it was because we were fighting for the sake of fighting, not because we could win those fights. And we need to pick our spots, you know? It's not just like, hey, we have an aggressive support. Well, we're going way too fast at this point. Um, we have an aggressive support, so let's pick fights. It's like, okay, we have an aggressive support, so look for any opportunity where she could possibly win fight. And this is unfortunate. Um, the main mistake here was the blast gun. I should have moved to the blast gun and then hit it, but I was just trying to walk to it and I accidentally auto-attacked it. Uh, that happens. <laughs> Luckily, drew a lot of focus from him, so our team is able to like clean up in the meantime. Uh, he does actually wind up uh, knocking down uh, J4, but Leona finishes him off, so that's pretty funny. Uh, three for a four there. Not the best, but with us getting completely 100 0 by their Udyr, that's a pretty decent <laughs> result. Now we finally have our core done, so we can actually shove and move through a little bit. Got ourselves some uh, nice life steal on top as well. Make sure that we can keep ourselves a little healthy as we work our way up to either Bork or BT. Probably Bork this game. Just looking at the composition, I would imagine it's, it was I went Bork. Um, see, this is another this is another good example of an opportunity here, right? I could have been taking this minion wave right now, but I saw that we have like an Ari that likes to charm. Let's even go back, right? Let's go back to where we made the decision. So we come in, and we stealth. And right here is the decision point, right? So why are we doing this? We're doing this because Ari's here. She's pathing in this direction, right? And both of them, Caitlyn being right here, are pathing up through here, probably looking toward here. But Leona's in position to ult, maybe even like Flash or Zenith Blade um, to make sure that they open up as they funnel through this direction, right? So I stay in stealth, and the further we go, the nicer this looks, right? Because now Ari is on the control ward, and we don't see this. Let's actually just look at our vision, right? Ari is on the control ward, but we know Leona isn't cutting, or we know Sona isn't cutting this way, because we'd already see her pop out. So that must mean she's going somewhere in this range. And sure, Leona doesn't have vision yet, so she can't just open up with her ult. Maybe she could actually try and ult the Kate here. But she wants to make sure that Ari gets involved in this too. So she wants to let them have time. So right now, we just walk past this minion wave. We let the minion wave push out. They think they're fine because nobody's getting those last hits. And this is me picking a fight because we have a good setup here. And sure enough, beautiful ult. Immediately deleted. Sure, we don't get Sona, but we do get her flash. Then I get to run over, help finish off this Infernal Drake. Great. No contest of the Drake, even if they were going to try to, which they weren't. Fortunately, the is pretty deep. I actually could have gone in and helped her more there, but I was thinking that she was dead, so I actually started these Raptors. But they funneled into such a small corridor here, we are just able to open up this Kraken Prey and just tear through them, right? And between the AoE from Malphite and the uh, AoE from J4, we just smash them. So we look to get as much damage as we can down before the minions show up. And try and shove the minion wave out as quickly as possible. Let me finish this up. J4 goes a little bit too deep there, because he didn't have much health to back him up. I'm sure there was a sweet engage and all, but... We do have to back up. Again, I already tried to follow up on it, but just not enough to make it work. Since I have Vision of Singed, I know to cheat to this side, and I can just walk away in time. Great. We have good ward coverage of the Baron area, so 
So we probably can back and walk there before, um, before they can clear it out and start it. Which is exactly what happens, they start to clear it out. We're already here again, so great. We see that they're over here. Again, are we gonna pick a fight here? Well, we have these two to back us up immediately on us. And J4 can re-engage very well, and we have Ari coming as well. So we don't necessarily want to immediately go for it, but if they split up like this, then we can cut like this with Malphite, and these two coming from this angle are going to make us be able to have basically what is at the most a 2 or a 1 v2 and a 1 v4. So we should have really great odds because Leona is going to be able to zone these guys away. Because they're going to see Leona and be like, oh god, Leona's going to all in us. We're probably going to die. So I picked the fight. Ari's here to back me up. J4 actually wrapped around this way, but that's fine. I'm able to just kite back a little bit and then open up a spray and pray. Again, great. Because they're in a straight line, basically. They're funneling quite a bit. I flash to get a little bit more damage down. Great. In the meantime, body's dropping over here. So I bring the minions in, and we just close it out. I think we're actually able to finish here. Yeah, this is the final push. Focus hurts. Focus nexus. I think we actually go down. Yeah. We actually go down. But the team's able to clean it up so much that they get enough. They get enough of them down to where they can finish it up. Take some kills out on the way. So great. Not that bad. I honestly thought that was going to be a lot more painful to watch than it was. There were definitely some painful to watch moments. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it wasn't the initial thought I had. Which is something that I experience a lot when I go through these replays with you guys. I think like, okay, well this time I just I just wasn't going in with my support. That was the problem. Absolutely not. That was not the problem. The problem was I was fighting too much. Conversely, right? Almost the exact opposite lesson is what we need to take out of that. I was picking fights for no reason at all. I was like, oh, well, I have a Leona. So let's fight all the time. <laughs> not what cooldowns are up. Did Sona just queue? Great, she did. Okay, let's fight. Did Sona just heal? Okay, wait. Okay, now her heal's still on cooldown, and the shields are down. Let's fight. Hey, are they out of position? Because they're positioning aggressively by our turret to try and get turret damage down? Well, I have a Leona and a turret now. Let's fight. Hey, do we have a huge minion wave behind us that they have to attack into uh, to keep harassing us? And, like, is Leona positioned to engage if they try and harass me? Okay. Let's fight. Those are situations where we can fight. Situations we can't fight is Leona's Zenith Blade is down because she tried to use it on the cannon minion, and I decide to fight because I have Leona. <laughs> like, that is not a good situation. Another bad situation, I have a Leona, but she's not necessarily here right now. She's a little bit further down the river, so I'm going to take a greedy cut, or she might have even been further up towards blue buff. So I'm going to greedily cut... Uh, towards no, she was in the river. I'm pretty sure she was in the river. Either way, I'm gonna greedily cut towards our turret through the minion wave, even though they can see me. Why am I picking that fight? There's no reason to pick that fight. Um, and at the very start of the game, okay, well we want to shove the wave, but well, we can't because we're outranged. We're outranged by Sona Poke. We're outranged by Kate Autos. And we're not able to get consistent damage onto the minion line unless if we want to take a whole bunch of damage. So what do we do? We go in and take a whole bunch of damage. We fight. And we don't even return any damage because we're so outranged. And then we're chunked at half HP at the very start of the game. We're picking fights for no reason. And I have a Leona in the game is not a good enough reason. A good enough reason needs to be my Leona I have in the game is about to annihilate them if this fight happens. That's the way we fight. So, you know, tough lesson. <laughs> it kind of hurts, but, you know, that's okay. That's okay. Well, again, we're not used to playing Twitch aggressively yet, so this is a good, important uh, aspect to think about. Think about, hey, when can we fight? When is it going to be a fight that works out for our team? You know, me and my support, or me and my support and my jungler if my jungler's there. When is this going to be a situation that works out? Not, hey, should we fight now? 
Like we need to we need to put a little bit more thought into it, which is hard to do in when you're in that moment, but I think we can do that. I don't think that's so hard that we can't do that. So if you know somebody who could uh, learn to put a little bit more thought into when they choose to fight rather than just fighting for the sake of fighting, please send them this video. Hopefully seeing my mistakes and seeing how bad that early game was uh, can help them uh, vicariously learn how to not make some of those same mistakes I've been making today. Uh, if you were that person who learned something from this video, good, I'm glad. I like. I'm, I hope that you don't make those mistakes anymore. You can learn from my mistakes. Feel free to do the like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you watching my videos. We'll have more lessons up uh, coming coming every day. We're live, so hang out with us on Twitch while we're live, or keep subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we'll just keep on pumping them out. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.